Hi, I'm Dan from Ausgel. And I'm Matt from The Garrison. And today we're going to be having a chat with the president of a veteran organisation. All right, Matt, thanks very much for joining us, mate. It's always good to see another veteran in the jail wall community. Um, really good to see and good to see you active in the jail wall community as well. Uh, so let's just start off with a bit of an introduction about you. Who are you? Tell us a bit about your service, mate, and uh, how you came into jail wall. I'm Matt Tolson. I enlisted in the military straight out of school uh, as infantry. I was a uh, grunt for seven and a half years and Dan and I didn't realise at the time, but we actually deployed to Timor on the same battle group um, back in 2006. Crazy. So, yeah, yeah. just chatting yeah. about that before. It, it's a big huh. country, man, and uh, yeah, yeah, both doing different things, but... Didn't know each other time. back then, but then, no. yeah, here we are, 2020, and um, doing this. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, so more or less, I work for a, a chapter of uh, the RSL Queensland. Uh, we're called The Garrison, and our job is trying to provide... Uh, social interaction for the younger generation of veterans, get them out of their houses, uh, get them back involved in the community. Yeah, we, we're doing a pretty good job, mate. We, we've run From a lot of events. From what I'm you are, mate. And um, while, while we're uh, on the topic of Garrison, do you want to just run us through how Garrison differs from other defence charity organisations or yeah. ESOs? Yeah, sure, Dan. Yeah, so an ESO is an ex-service organisation, uh, and that just refers to a, a large group of uh, various organisations trying to look after veterans and current serving members. Uh, so we're a little bit different. We target um, sort of a younger generation of people. We're only doing social engagement, but we really work hard to include their families and their friends. So, you know, if you've got a mate who's in, been in the military, he's having a bit of trouble, you're, you're welcome to bring him along. Um, it, it gets them out of their house, gets them involved... And I notice you're doing a lot of fun stuff because when, when oh, I look yeah. at the Garrison page, I can see, you know, week after week, there's like a yeah. different kind of event. You're doing like dinners, you're doing lunches, you're doing um, events where you're going out to places. Yeah. Escape room coming up? Yeah, yeah, we're doing yeah. an escape room, which is, if you don't know, it's puzzle solving, like a mystery thing. It's just something fun. Yeah. Um, and then outside that, you know, there's a few cheeky beers in the cafe. and Nice. It's just hanging out. Um and trying to do things that are irrelevant. Yeah. You know, we, we take them shooting. Yep. We, we do a lot of indoor shooting. Um, we've done a couple of longer range shoots, which is good for the vets to get back in it. Yeah. Um, and being able to bring their family along, show what they do. Yep. It's a bit of a special skill that you don't get to and show. And more importantly, you've also brought them gel balling now. Yeah, we do. We've, we've got actually a, a rapidly growing group of gel ballers. Um, we're good all pretty new and keen. And, yeah, uh, yeah we, we're... It's found that it's really good for the families. The partners are just, yeah, that's monsters, brilliant. Monsters on the field, they love it. Fantastic. Well, look, the um, the gel ball side of this. How did you find gel ball? How did you get into it? Yeah, so we were looking for a sport that's good for veteran skill set um, that can make something positive of it, because after a certain time, especially with PTSD and all the other issues there, yeah, it can be a bit negative. And so this is a positive thing. We're good at it, by and large. Yeah. Um, you can get around your physical injuries on the field pretty easily, but you can take your family, the kids come. Uh, it's just a normal family day out, but it's a sport where everybody can actually enjoy it. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty even playing field. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, um, for, for new people that are trying to get into gel ball, uh, more specifically, any any veterans out there that are, are looking at, at getting into job ball, have you got any tips for them? Any pro tips for the for the new players? For the new guys, well, I'm one of them. I've only oh, been, mate, I've you've only got two been... months under your belt. Yeah, so yeah. I'd call you a veteran. Uh, we'll see. The big things: find somewhere that you're comfortable, and get amongst it. Have a go first. You don't have to go out and buy you know a thousand dollar blaster or anything crazy. Just go somewhere you can rent them. Have a go. See if see if it does appeal. Um, it will and then yeah get to a shop find a provider that you can get along with get kit up and um, get the family kit up and get amongst it that, that's really all there is to it there's there's a lot of different disciplines I think you'd call them of yep. gel ball and, and there's one for everybody and everybody's physical capabilities as well because let's face yeah. it a lot of vets have you know, 
We've all got buggered knees and backs and yeah. all the other fun stuff. Don't know why. It's not like they had you lugging around an 80-kilo pack, you know. Yeah. Oh, luxury 80 <laughs> kilos. <laughs> Uh, yeah, luxury. <laughs> Love it. Hey, mate, I was a sick, so I had the batteries. Yeah. It's terrible. Um, so, mate, what what's the best opportunity that gel ball has given you since you got into the sport? Look, we actually um, we started planning an event, the Veteran 400. Yep. And, and that opened doors to get in and, and meet a lot of the industry. Yeah. It's unreal how many vets, like yourself are in the industry or working in the industry, running fields, running shops. Um, so I think it's been a really good opportunity to meet a like-minded group of people. Yeah. Um, and I think it's certainly got a lot of scope there going forward. You know, I wish I'd found this years ago. I'm pretty well now, but there was a period there I wasn't. Yeah. And I think that, um, that physical activity and, and a positive use of my skill set would have really helped at the time. And it's one of those things in the gel ball industry as well. When when you think about it, um, coming out to your first game, there's so many new players joining the field every week that when you go out to a field, it's almost like your first day at Kapuka. You know, I mean, um, you know, you rock up, everyone's in the same boat, and they're going, "Oh, well, what do I do?" You know, there's a little you're, less you're shouting, looking around, yeah, but slightly but less shouting, yeah, le- much less shouting. Yeah. That's the good thing. But you know, <laughs> you rock up to a field, and and you'll yeah. find that you know a lot of people are looking yeah. around. There's a lot of other new people there that you'll be able to engage yeah. with, and you generally find the people that are already in the industry. Um, we're going to be pretty friendly. We're going to welcome you into the yeah. game. So, especially um, being a vet, yeah, you know, absolutely. Everyone's really interested. Everyone cares about your service. Um, and values it because they can have some idea of what we used to have to do. Yeah. Um, but they're just they're just excited to see people getting out and getting amongst it, and people that have got some skill. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that's not to say that that current serving members don't come out and play because there's heaps of them out there too. Yeah, there is. Um, Funny when they get a group of them together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, they play pretty yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, civvies just don't understand how. Very casual, chilled out game for them is is <laughs> considered pretty aggressive. Yeah, that's it. It's impressive to watch though when you actually see a group working well together and you know they can actually get a flank happening and some fire base and yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, uh, good stuff. We did touch base on that veteran four hundred event. Now, um, not wanting to get into the reasons why it was postponed, not yep. my place to say. Not interested in the politics, but um, I do know that you are postponing that to next year sometime. What's in yeah. store for Veteran 400? What, what, what's going to happen? Yeah, so what we're actually planning to do is over the next few months, we're going to take our team and we're going to go out and, and have a really good look at what's out there, look at yep. all the fields and uh, and just see who we think we can work with, see who we can get on board to cooperate with us because we're all about trying to get people to work together. Yep. We do the same in the ASO space. We, we really work hard to get as many people to work together. We actually had four separate ASOs on board for the Vet 400. Okay, yep. Um, which is a big thing, getting them to work together and everybody contribute. Yeah. Uh, and we'd like to see the same thing happen across the gel ball industry. We want to be that, uh, that bridge between organisations and, and, try and try and work on building the sport rather than any individual. Yeah, good. Um, because I think it's got a lot to offer. Yeah. I, I really do think it's got a lot to offer. Um, and I think the same time next year we'll, we'll position it around Remembrance Day again. So that way we can do our, our remembrance service and then get amongst it. Keep an eye out for that one. And yeah. um, Okay, so from what I understand, a Garrison is a part of the larger RSL Queensland family. Yep. Um, now, I know that one of the challenges that RSL has faced over the past sort of, you know, several years has been a, a bit of a difference in, in age in the, you know, the, the people within the organisation being able to relate with veterans of the modern army who are coming out of, you know, uh, the, the Afghanistan conflict, uh, team or a few other theatres, you know. So um, what, what do you think is, uh, is, is likely to happen there in the future and what's the relationship like there with Garrison and RSL? A lot of it has to do, I think, with the average age in the RSL. Yep. A lot of them are older. There was a, a big gap in the wars... Yeah. Um, between Vietnam and, and I guess what you we term contemporary veterans. Yep. Uh, I think that age gap's made it a little bit difficult for the two different groups to do the... They don't want to do the same thing. So RSL is doing a lot of work now, and Garrison is part of that. Yeah. Uh, with, where they're trying to work out what they can do to make the younger contemporary vets welcome. Mm. Um, 
the other one I've noticed, there are a lot of people in that 40-year gap that did huge service and lots of peacekeeping, lots of emergency service work, yep. um, you know, disaster recovery. And those people didn't feel like they belonged at the RSL. Mm. A lot of them don't see themselves as a veteran because they didn't go overseas. But they should, and that's something Absolute, we should tell people. Absolutely, you know? right? I mean, if, if, yeah. if you served a day in uniform, you've signed the same cheque, right? And that is up to and including your life to Australian government. Because it wasn't checked, because it wasn't balanced, it doesn't matter. You've done the same service and... You're still a veteran. You deserve, you deserve to own that title, guys, and women. Like, mm. It's just... It really upsets me mm. when people that served don't don't value their own service or they value someone else's service over their own. Um, and that's got to stop, I think. Yeah. That's really got to stop. And that's one of the things Garrison's really uh, firm on. Everyone's service is equally yep. valuable. Um, and everyone's welcome. You know, I think RSL has started to realise that that's the case. And it's starting to push that all these people are actually welcome at the RSL. It is their RSL. Um, people who run the RSL don't own it. They're just looking after it for the next generation. Mm. And RSL State and all the sub-branches, they're, they're working really hard trying to, to shift their organisation to be able to look after the next generation. Yep. And Garrison's part of that. We're testing different membership models. Um, proving that the, the social engagement is extremely important in building that community yep. uh, and the individual resilience that comes out of that because they get their own you know, group of friends and then they're able to uh, look after each other a bit better that way. And RSL's shifting back, I think, to that social side. They're still all about advocacy and welfare and they do that very well. Yeah. Uh, and that's an extremely important role. But I think for a period there, they lost a bit of the community. Um, and that space has been filled by an enormous amount of other ESOs trying to do fill the gap. Yeah. Uh, and RSLs realised that it needs to go back and and really welcome people back into the sub branches. Uh, and personally, I had a pretty poor experience when I first left the military with RSL, and it took uh, nearly ten years for me to go back to RSL. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, you know, funny you mention that because, um, you know, I think it's uh, not just an experience that, you know, like yourself might have had with the RSL, but also some of these other ESOs, you know, I mean, yeah. um, you know, th there was a, a little point in time for, for me in the past few years where, um, you know, I went out on a limb, you know, I was in a, in a bit of trouble there and, and I actually reached out to one of these ESOs, um, you know, looking for work and, you um, you know, and, and essentially had the door closed on me, just ignored, um, you know, and it, it's just like they didn't want to help. And when I come across organisations like like this and I start to see things like RSL wanting to, you know, yeah. make, make a tangible difference, yep. um, that's the sort of stuff that I think is worthwhile supporting. Whether you've had a bad experience or not, I just want to see people reaching out to RSLs. Go to your local sub-branch and you'll find that you'll get a lot out of it yourself. Yeah. Um, but there's, you know, keep an eye out for garrison programs. They're slowly, slowly spreading away from southeast Queensland, um, and and I think we just need people to give RSL another go. I think, yeah, because it's working hard. It's really working hard to um, to step up and and help yep. us out. Well, Matt, look, really love your work, mate. So uh, look, let, let's let's wrap it up there. I, I think it's great what you're doing. Um, once again, you know, any any veterans out there that are watching this. Um, if you want to get involved with some of the activities that Garrison's doing, just just go and check out their uh, you know their page. Speaking of which, how do our audience find you guys? Righto, so it's called the Garrison Community on Facebook. Uh, we have a public page and then a members group. Uh, but the garrison.org.au is the easiest way to find us. Everything's there. All the links to all the social media is there. You can see all our upcoming events in a rolling calendar. Um, you know, you'll see we do a lot like. There's something there for everybody, I think. Good stuff. All right, yeah. thanks very much again, once Sorry. again, mate. And uh, guys, as always, I'm Dan from Ausgel. You can find us on www.ausgel.com.au, also on Facebook and YouTube at Ausgel, and on Instagram at Ausgel Ammo, and we are also on TikTok. <laughs>